e4. Let's see how Gukesh responds. He plays e5, super solid. And there's something about e4, e5 at the candidates which the players prefer because it is uh, the most solid opening out there. Knight c6. And will Caruana go for the... Yes, he goes for the Italian. This, this candidate has been a lot about the Spanish, actually. Bishop b5, where the bishop is placed here. But Caruana goes for the Italian, which leads to a more interesting and less theoretical battle but now of course theory in the italian is also growing but the speed of the game will be pretty slow now if if caruana goes d3 well first he castles <coughs> and gukesh will put his knight out on f6 yes he does that knight comes out attacks the pawn the pawn has to be defended he plays a d3 here and now very interesting uh, this this phase of the game is very interesting because there are many many move orders like for example white's moves are c3 knight d2 a4 b4 rook e1 and these can be played in any move order black's moves are d6 a6 bishop a7 castles h6 again can be played in any move order there karuana plays c3 here uh, on the board and now Gukesh has to decide what is he doing. If he castles here, he has to be also ready for this move bishop g5, which can be pretty sharp here. He goes a6 and he wants to drop his bishop back to a7. It's kind of a waiting move because bishop g a4 played by Fabi gaining space. Because bishop g5, when black has not castled, is not a great idea because you can start pushing your kingside pawns. So bishop goes back to a7. And now, uh, Karuana pushes his pawn to h3. Interesting move. Maybe Gukesh can go h6. I sometimes feel like when you play h3, there is g5, g4 that can come in later. But for now, Gukesh is not entertaining any such thoughts. He just castles it out. Uh, and black is also has castled. Now, Karuana can go bishop g5, but he goes knight d2. And the rook comes out to e8. For Gukesh. Calmly progressing is this game, but Karuana gains more space on the queen side. And this is again one of the things in the Italian that white starts to gain space on the queen side. Gukesh now says to Fabi that I'm ready to exchange the bishops, and because he's placed his rook on e8, he will capture it with the rook. So Karuana takes now taking with the pawn doesn't make sense because if the rook was here. It made some sense. Once you brought the rook here, you want to take it with the rook. So, if you notice something here, you will see that, uh, by the way, queen goes to c2. You will see that white has more space. So, in order to counter attack there, d5 seems like a logical idea for Gukesh. And he's thinking and he plays rook e8 back. Karuana places his rook on e1. Gukesh pushes his pawn to h6 just to control the g5 square. And now, what is Fabi going to do? He goes knight to f1. So, knight is going to be very well placed on the g3 square. With the bishop looking here and maybe the knight jumping to f5, it can lead to a pretty serious attack. But Gukesh realizes that he must create some play. And that's the reason why he goes in the center with d5. A fine move there, hitting in the center. And Karuana places his knight to g3. Just improving the position of his pieces. Here, knight is well positioned. And now, black plays the move b5. With this move b5, uh, Gukesh has basically said to Karuana, I also want space on the queen side. But Fabi is now looking for some sacrifice on h6 with his knight coming to f5. So the game is sharpening up 